the sill plate allows us to align everything right now. Now the question is what happens at the top? What happens if panels are slightly warped out? Because wood can be warped out. Uh, it can be warped out to a couple of inches. So you want a house that has straight walls. So there's two things we can do. Two main things. Well, I guess three, I would say three alignment points. One is the, one is the sill plate that gives you a square base and that's pretty much uh, we can actually take a take an exact measurement but we're perfect to square to within like a quarter inch right now and then when we put the panels on how do we make sure that the tops remain like say there's warping on the panels how do, how do you get that in, into place well uh, two things after that so one would be lag bolts in between the panels and second thing is then the top plate which will bond everything together. How do we assist this? So we've got a bunch of laser levels. Um, what we can do is put the laser levels on the corners and then when we place the panels up you can see the little beam of light uh, so we can put the lasers on the corners. I'll, I'll show a picture of this. So this is actually um, under SH2 build Let's see, build would be under concept design. No, let's go into the build instructions. Inner walls, electrical, bathroom, kitchen, sill plate. Painting walls and panel construction. Nah, not here. How about the main fabrication diagram? There we go. Okay. Let's take a look at this. First story walls procedure. So the challenge is, so, you know, if these walls are steel, you know, they'll be pretty much straight. This is wood. It can be all warped up. Wood tends to warp in the sun if it dries and, and gets wet. So here you have to take precautions as far as how do you get everything lined up. And, and one way to do it is these lasers. So what we can do is put two lasers on a corner, uh, like what I show here. And we have these lasers. We have actually four lasers. Um, and they shine a beam of light right next to the wall, like say half an inch away. So that when you put the panel up, you can take a piece of white piece of paper. Um, in the daylight, the, the laser is marginally visible. It's a green laser. Um, but what you would do is take a piece of paper and like put it next to the wall and you'll see the laser dot. But it's actually going to be a line. It's going to be a line. So if you're like, say, half an inch away, you're good. So you know where you, you can gauge the, uh, the verticalness of the wall. These lasers are self-aligning. They once you, so if you click on one of these, if you click on the laser, you can look more at this. It, sh it throws a a plane, plane of light in two directions. Uh, this kind of, um, well, this this particular one is three beams that are planes. If you put this on a corner, then you can shoot two corners at the same time. Uh, so this is this is what we have. If you set on a corner, it can shoot actually two two lines at the same time. We actually have a a bunch of uh, more lasers which are just one one plane so that if we put them on a the corner you can do that. They're brighter, they're actually brighter because these are sharing their light. Um, so we'll, we'll see how that works and first thing is is it going to be practical? I, I hope so. I hope the lasers can help us as opposed to we just don't use them. Um, but the point of reference, the number one point of reference is the bottom plate. Um, where the walls lay. So, I mean, that's that's the start. We know we have to put the panels there. We're not going to put them off the plate. 
keep it on the plate because we know that the plate is already good. Um, so, so the plate, sill plate, is our first measure of accuracy. Okay, so if we are, if we're just taking a, any kind of a foundation that say we have built it, uh, the procedure would be so measure, you would measure that the corners are within one inch. If you measure across, they should be within one inch. That's kind of like the allowable um, within one inch. And one inch is like, you know, one inch over over 16 or 32 feet. Yeah, like let's not get any more than that. Uh, but right now we're at a quarter inch that the cross cross measurements are off from one another. And then half an inch of foundation height. So I measure the height with a laser level before and we were like plus minus like th three eighths. Well, more like difference was like within three eighths or about a half inch from the highest point to the lowest point anywhere along the foundation. So you, n you wouldn't really be able to see that with your eyes. Uh, and this is something we want to record for quality control purposes as a reference. Okay, how, how well did we get the foundation? You want to be as close as possible, keep track of that to see when we're out there building, make sure that it's, we're measuring that and that, that number is hopefully improving with time as we take the data point for each build. Um, so how do you do the corner levels? We can use a tripod mount. Uh, these, these lasers can sit on a tripod. Uh, then you start mounting the panels. Uh, and then once we, we start at each corner, so we can build up each corner because that's an absolute reference. We know the corners are there. Only question is when we go, if we were to go from one side to the other, uh, if we were starting at four corners, which right now we have six six people working out there, seven people, uh, we can do up to three with two people per, but maybe like do a couple with a few people. Uh, yeah, like two teams on one corner, so there's two corner pieces, and maybe start the third one with a th uh, third team. Okay. So let's let's actually write this down for what we have to make sure of. Like so, this is our quality control list for uh, so uh, wall walls first story. Uh, so uh, quality control. Okay, first thing, so the first reference, use sill plate. Put panels on. Exactly. Now don't forget before the sill plate though, what uh, before we start laying the walls on, is there any more foundation detail we have to address? There's a sill gasket on a foundation. There's also uh, if you remember, in a, can anyone tell me for the sill plate, are we putting the panels on yet or is there another little piece of detail that we need to put on before the panels? Do you remember? We need to the sill gasket. Okay. Sill gasket is already there, right? We put the top one on. We have a sill gasket. Do you remember anything else? There is one more detail that you just have to pay attention to. Don't do this without it. So, um, what was that detail? Let's go back to the build instructions and go to. So, plate detail. We had the flashing, the flexible plastic flashing.
you remember in this detail. Um, There's our vinyl flashing. So this thing, it's a flexible plastic. Yeah, that goes. It goes over the the sill gasket and like one and a half inches above the back of the wall, and then it dribbles down over the over the cement board. So make sure we put that in as we start. Uh, in order to attach it, it's probably going to be moving around. We can we can do like a little staple on it, but then we have to put tape on it, um, the butyl tape. You don't want to puncture it. Uh, I mean, but I don't know how we're going to keep it in place without, you know, maybe like do a little staple, and then put the sealing tape over that so we don't get water underneath there because that's like the last measure like if there's any condensation that comes down there it kind of goes outside because there's this back backstop on the back side um, only safe place to attach it without getting into issues would be on the back of the wall panel but no I mean we want to have this continuous continuous vinyl flashing over the entire surface that's a hundred foot roll so we lay it out say on the um, 16 foot side and a 32 foot side we lay it all out so probably useful to attach and do a couple of staples but then we tape it up with the the it's called the self adhered waterproof barrier tape it's a tape we have so just uh, if we do any stapling of this to the foundation sill plate we want to see, make sure we close up those holes because a little um, your little staple hole that's a water hole a place where you can get water around the staple uh, so actually, in fact, the, the idea there, good idea would be because that's self-sealing, the tape is self-sealing, put the tape on first and then put, just put the staple through that. What makes more sense? I guess either. Uh, because it's self-sealing, I don't know. I think whichever, if we staple it, I think either... I don't know, any comments on that put the, put the tape on it and then staple through it either way but we want to attach the attach the, the vinyl flashing okay so then we start laying the walls so use the sill plate put panels on exactly okay. align with sill plate mm -hmm. so, uh, you know we, we cut the insulation that two inch piece Yes, that has to be in there too. Yeah, well, make sure. Is, is there any way of attaching that the flashing so it holds that? Because I imagine that piece. Um. Yeah, maybe the safe. Maybe we can just put some tape onto the cement board. Mm. Tape it to the cement board so it doesn't move around. I'm not sure how flexible it's if it's going to stay that way though it might just want to bend up and it'll be in a way you want it so when we're putting the walls on it's not nothing's in the way like once you put one one of the walls on you pinch it down um, so maybe we can try just putting that under the wall and not even not even stapling it I mean the walls are you got to lift up the entire panel I guess Joshua will do that with a finger, so we'll, we'll do that. Yeah, I think maybe just lay it under. Maybe maybe don't even staple. We'll we'll see how it works in real practice. All right. So so do not. So I'm gonna put one. Do not forget the vinyl flashing under walls, and then also. I would say make sure the the strip of insulation is in place. Let's not forget that, because um, that would be just a major 
thermal bridge. And then also make sure the sill gasket is in, in place that we didn't like rip it off, stand on it and rip it off. Make sure the sill gasket is in place. All right. So now we move and do one wall after another. So how do we attach? To attach walls to one another. Use pre-drilled lag bolt holes. Okay, so let's let's talk about the lag bolts because that's um, that's important. So let's do a slide duplicate slide. So what's a lag bolt? How does that thing look? These are lag bolts. So take one of these. We're using three and a half inch ones, so we can span across the three inches of the two panels next to each other. And three and a half inch because you see the, the end of it is tapered, so like the end of it will not be catching anything, so we use three and a half so that you get all to the threads in a little bit, the tip will be sticking out. But you're grabbing the full one and a half inches as opposed to one inch. So. Do we just drill these then? You can, but we want to do better than that. So here's the logic. Um, so let me just copy that. Yeah, you can do that. And we're going to use impact wrenches to do that, air tools. Uh, so take a look at how. To, uh, so they're going to be, yeah, ratcheting air tools, right angle impact wrenches. Um, take a look at. You can get this at Harbor Freight. Uh, so. So we're shopping for right angle impact. One of these. It's an air tool. So that's that's what you do in a socket. You need a socket to, to put on a head and, and this. So half inch. For half inch bolts, there will be a three quarter inch socket. get one of these things. That's what you need there. Now you can drive them in, uh, no problem. Otherwise you can take take a wrench to it, but you'll be like turning that forever, whereas here you take a couple of seconds versus a few minutes by hand, like a couple of minutes by hand. So they're not going to have likely enough power to drive the thick lag bolt we're pre so let's talk about the whole, what we are doing there. Um, so let's talk about lag bolts. And that's already uh, it's already in, in the build doc here in the, in the build instructions. But what's the pattern there for in the module design guide here? Let's take a look at it. So basically drill a hole in the middle of the panel and then up two and a half feet, down two and a half, two and a half. So let's show this pattern. already. So those are the holes there that like we were doing the cheat sheets. Uh, make one hole in the middle. I don't know I have like 52 and 5. Just keep it simple there. 
let's go to something you can remember, like four and a half feet. Uh, since we have nine foot modules, half is four and a half. We'll just keep it simple. Uh, so let's redo that number. That's just too complicated. And then two feet up and two feet down. So you're at 6.5 and two feet from the floor. 6.5 is, well, 7. 4.5 plus, let's do 2.5. Uh, so you start at 4.5 and go 2.5 up and down so that you're you're capturing you kind of midpoint and then it's kind of like mid up way and such from there so that's the idea now centering hole now there was the idea of a centering hole so and this is this is negotiable we'll find out in practice how well it works but what we want to do is on one side, when you have one panel going to the next one, pre-drill the half a half inch hole for the half inch bolt, so it just goes right in, and it catches because the lag bolts don't have any threads on the top part anyway. So, drill a half inch hole through one side, and then have a quarter inch, because uh, when you look at lag bolt specs, you typically want to pre-drill holes for lag bolts. Otherwise, they're very hard to get in. I mean, they're half inch, big mean threads going through wood. That's it's actually you have to be very strong to. Well, it takes takes some force to to ratchet that. So to make that easier, you pre-drill holes. I mean, one thing is if you just ratcheted this right in, you could probably spl split the wood. I mean, it's a half inch bolt. Uh, so you want to pre-drill, not too much, just enough so that the threads grab aggressively. Um, not too little so it's too hard to to put in or it might split the wood so I think if you look at the number for half inch bolt it's about quarter inch for the pre-drill hole um, and that's that's what we want to do so on one side so one panels one panel has the half inch hole the other side has a quarter inch now what does that also allow you to do it allows you to locate if those holes are drilled precisely then those will be alignment holes for the panels. You don't have to guess like where up or down you're going to locate the actual uh, screw through point. Before we just use screws, just one panel to the next and use screws, disadvantage of that, a, a screw has only so much grab so if, you, if your wood is pretty bent up it won't really pinch the panels together and you're fighting it. We won't have enough strength to actually do the alignment. So what we're doing here is doing one half inch hole. On the other side, we're pre-drilling the quarter. So you have the half and you kind of align it, make sure it goes in. And that's a self-aligning mechanism at that point. So that's, that's the idea there. Now, the other aspect there was drilling a one inch centering hole so that if the panel is all bent up you can put in a a one inch shaft that's tapered so you can force it in and you can force the two panels to align to one another even if like if you catch it because it's a point goes to a point you could be off like say a, maybe even up to like a half an inch and because it's a tapered tapered shaft it would force the alignment it's like a wedge it would force the alignment of the two panels. Now these are some of the considerations that from practice we know we have to consider because the panels may be off and if it's as little as like half inch off those holes are not going to align like f for the the lag bolts. So you have to follow a procedure. Now what's the most useful procedure? One, attach to the sill plate so we know we have the bottom localized once we have the so the first panel so this procedure is is important to follow it because we really need to do it otherwise we'll be like fighting it and you move one end the the bottom end moves you move the middle you know possibly the top and bottom move right if it's warped up so in order not to be fighting it we have to follow a rigorous procedure to make sure we're uniform and that procedure also makes sense it has to say it has to be like okay 
we're doing one part at a time. We start with a foundation, which is already in place. We have to go on it. Then probably the most logical idea would be to put in the bottom lag bolt. So let's talk about why why would we want to put in a bottom lag bolt as opposed to middle or top? Is there any logic to that? Can can you think of any? Does that make sense? Because I think that that's what would make most sense. Yeah, it's connected to the bottom. It's already connected to the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you're so you did the bottom, and it's already pretty tight there. It's because that that first lag bolt is is like two feet up. You're close to to good. So you continue making it aligned. Yes. Okay. Cool. Now what? what next do we go to the middle one or to the top one I guess it would make sense to keep going up is that logical does that make sense um, it could be logical unless the, it's really bent up in which case I think it would be easier to go straight to the top well then how do you get the middle perfected if you could be fighting the middle I mean if that panel is bent up you'd be fighting the middle I think the top since it's still flexible you can move that into place so I would start with the bottom then go to straight to the top when do you use the center and so I would say now we have the middle, okay? So I would say we use the centering hole if the middle needs a lot of help. So that means we're not like trying to push from one side of the wall and then the other side, especially if you're up on a second story, you're on scaffolding, you're trying to push it. You gotta really handle it. You can put some force on it to get aligned. So I think that that's where the centering hole would come really useful. You just bang that wedge into the side and it just pinches together to the exact right location. No mystery about it. Otherwise, you're putting a lot of force on one while trying to pull on the other. That's a coordinated effort across where you can't see the other person because you got the siding on it. It's a little difficult to coordinate. It's easy to coordinate if you just put that centering hole in. So this would need to happen if you want good quality, like, you know, two of, you know, like probably an eighth of an inch. We can drill the locating holes for the, well, one, the locating hole, but the second is the lag bolt holes. Those could be drilled quite precisely to, to say, within an eighth inch. You can mark it at eighth inch, and then you can drill it that accurately because we're going to use the mag drill. So we have two mag drills out there. Uh, we can use that. Um, the, the bottom, so the bottom of the panel will enter the sill plate. Yeah. The lag bolts in there as well. To Not to the bottom. There's... Those are long lag bolts. The tip comes out. You wouldn't be able to get a lag bolt in there. Okay. What are really? We so, so lag bolts are on the side. So, if you look at my screen, um, for the bottom of the panel, like you put it. Bottom, on we're just gonna have to screw it down. Okay. That's. I just. We, uh, we, it wasn't mentioned. So. Yeah. Screw so screw it down. Now we might have to do like little little tie plates, cause uh, the screw down. Um, I think the engineer is going to make us do little metal tie plates between the, the sill plate and the bottom plate. So we, we could probably get we can do that after we get this in place. Um, but I think I think that's what's going to be required um, because right now the sill plate is bound by the anchor the mud sill anchor to the foundation, but the walls are not bound to the to the sill plate the way we're doing it. So we're going to need, very likely, there's screws we can put in, put in a bunch of screws, but and we're probably going to need a little metal plate on, the, on this side here. Could be an L-shaped or could be just a, yeah, L or just a plate on the, on the side there, Span, uh, spanning across the, the sill plate and the bottom plate of the wall panel. So that's the technical design there. Do we have those? Uh, yeah, we've got we've got some of that. We can use. Uh, we got them. Are we gonna put these on Friday? Or are we gonna. We're gonna try it today. We're gonna see how. Today. 
today. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, this is right now. We're talking what we're going to work on today. So we've got to finish the four modules, get them all out there, and then put them right on a trailer and and do that. Is the trailer there now? Um, I said, I told Jeff to, to bring it out there. So we're getting ready for that. Okay. Use pre-drilled lag bolt holes. So we said install bottom lag bolt first. So, yes, so let's write that down. Use sill plate, put panels on exactly on line with sill plate, screw down. With four screws per panel as a start, just to, we might nail that off later. Install bottom, bottom line bolt first. Um, use use impact ratchet, right angle ratchet, right angle ratchet or impact. Now, uh, a regular impact would work on a lot of panels, but others you can't get in because it's too tight like some of the corner or window panels so bottom line bolt first so we said go to the top because that's completely flexible and you'll be able to move it back and forth to get it perfectly aligned as long as the first bolt was aligned the only discrepancy in the top bolt is going to be back and forth forward and backwards you can definitely get it very easily because the top is completely flexible it's not attached. Okay, so move to bottom lag bolt first. Install top lag bolt second. Because the top is, is movable. So what would happen if you did the middle first, middle right after that? Yeah, you can possibly move it back and forth. It may be hard, but if you get it in and the top is bent, then you're going to be fighting the top at height, which is not good. It's on a ladder. No, you don't want to do that. So fix the top, which is on a ladder. Well, well, it's not, not necessarily on a ladder. It's if you had to move it back and forth, like you, you might have to step up like one or two steps on the ladder because it's uh, the bolt itself is going to be uh, seven feet, so it's like a, a little above your head. So, so maybe like you step up a couple of rungs on a ladder. Um, okay, so in stop, install top, top lag bolt second because top is still movable, and then use centering hole in the middle to align if needed so let's let's do this let's just copy one of these things here one inch centering hole Let's call it three inches above. Just put it like three inches above so it's in a convenient location. So the centering hole in the middle to align if needed. So stick a tapered tapered pin, tapered one inch pin into the hole. So that's a one inch one inch hole. 
can drill that once again with a mag drill. Okay, so that is, let me see, let me uh, maybe share this so other people can edit this too. Six holes? Oh, no, forget, that's too many. Let's, let's keep it to, I think that's a little excessive. Um, so four holes. Now we can still put in some more screws or actually nails if we want to, if we feel that's necessary. We're trying to, or you, actually we can put in maybe like smaller, smaller screws. If, I guess the, the specifics of that, I mean the bolts are more than enough to hold this together, like that's steel. So three of them is probably as good as like 20 screws, because um, half inch compared to 8 inch is like 16 times more per bolt. Now the weak point there is going to be the wood, like so that's the actual part that's... Uh, that's I guess this, the exact schedule we'll, uh, we'll get from the engineer, which we should be able to ship that engineering out in the next couple of days. Because uh, basically what the engineer is going to tell you is, okay, all your, your structural members are correct, and then they're going to tell you, here's the screw schedule, like exactly what you need to make, make code based on, say, 90 per mile per hour winds and so forth. But I think we're designing for like 90 mile per hour winds. Um, centering hole. So that's if needed. So what's this tapered pin look like? So that's uh, we might might have somewhere we can um, make just basically sharpen sharpen a one inch uh, shaft. So just take a I think we might have one of these, but just basically a well a pin. Do you leave it in or no 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 you don't want to leave it in reuse it just punch it right out so this pin is going to go into that locating hole a smaller pin than that but that's how the centering pin would look um, and that way you don't have to fight it and the longer that taper like the easier it is to get it in you literally have like a point like that so I mean it's easy to get it in it, it wedges it into place so you can if even if it's off like say I mean potentially even up to like close to one inch then you can still get them all aligned now if it's if there's trouble there then we have to go to second I mean this should should solve any issue in bad cases we might have to do extra measures like uh, you know push from either side or I mean, you really need a handle, like if you, because there's nothing to grab onto. There's the studs there, so you need to probably like put in a some kind of a wood member, attach it to either side, and grab on that wood member, and and then try to move it back and forth until it it's actually uh, flat. That's what you need. You need flat, or we can go on the. Oh yeah, actually another way to do it is you can stick, say a two by four on that, screw it into one side, and then when you screw into the other one, it should put, put, pull it towards the screw, so that's another way to do it. Each screw, if you get it in like that, has up to like 300 pounds of force, so a screw would be quite enough, as long as you can grab it, it's a long screw and it actually grabs, you can pull with a lot of force using screws. If um, yeah, so, But that's like, hopefully we don't have to do that, because that all takes time, you got to screw in a board, then then get it all aligned, then put in a lag bolt. It's just more extra steps and if you got you want this to go like fast. Ideally you put the 
put the panel next to each other screw down four screws at the bottom put in the first lag bolt few seconds top lag bolt few seconds middle pin or even just straight through with the if it's aligned do the middle middle hole so like a few minutes per that's the optimal speed if everything is working or if the team is all aligned and on the same page I mean this could go extremely rapidly we've seen this uh, I mean the best we've seen is like maybe like 15 minutes or maybe 30 minutes like when we did the walls if we review the tapes from the CD Cajon 1 build um, it took us a few hours um, I forget like maybe four hours to do the first floor with a bunch that was a bunch of people though like people working on multiple corners at the same time so this can go very rapidly like man and um so we've got like this afternoon basically like four hours to and it probably will take that long for the rest of the modules and then four hours later yeah ideally if uh, but if we're going to get into trouble and we can't get things aligned that's where you burn all the time it's going to be all set up we got to set up the lasers uh roll out the silgat the the vinyl flashing it's all about setup. Like once you're rolling, it's it's incredibly fast. But I mean, theoretically, the theoretical limit is two people work on each corner, two teams. So you got eight teams. Well, each team then has to do only three panels, theoretically, right? Um, eight teams of two people. So you got 16 people working on this. But I mean, if you got to do three panels, you know, the minimum, like if you, if it actually goes together as with perfection 15 minutes later you've got the entire first floor I mean that's as fast as it could go if you have a well worked out process and this is what makes a difference as I mentioned before whether it's a job that you're making five dollars an hour to like a hundred or two hundred dollars an hour because you're you've got extreme productivity in that process but actually, like you know, as a note of encouragement, I, if you think about okay, there's a fifty thousand dollar service fee for that's that's our model that we're saying would work definitely right now to still get you breakthrough cost, which right now people are like, how are you going to do that? But if you look at the raw numbers, hundred modules total. Let's say about a hundred, right? Well, what's fifty thousand divided by a hundred? You're gonna pay five hundred bucks a module effectively like just just for as a rough point of a reference so I mean this once modularized and perfected to to efficiency this this is like extreme efficiency but it takes you extreme time to get there that I mean that's what we're witnessing here you guys are all seeing this this just doesn't happen doesn't just happen it's hard work and it's physical work and it's design work that we're really maxing out uh, it is encouraging still. The promise is better. It looks better than ever. I mean, I'm, I'm more encouraged than ever that the numbers that we're predicting are, are going to happen, or at least we have evidence that yeah, it does because we've we've built things before and now it should go faster. Right now, the the point that goes faster is before we did overlap of of the um, the house wrap from one panel to the next to the side. Well, what's that mean? That means you have to keep one side loose and try to slip it under. Well, we're not doing that anymore. We're wrapping the whole panel and then using more tape and a batten seam to get rid of that whole complication. So now it can go really fast. But yeah, the, the potential is there and it, that, that still stands better than ever. Um, okay, so if we go to uh, just, just to here. So, okay, so now how do we drill these things? So, and what else? Like as we're gonna have the top plate out there as well I think after three panels are up we can do the first top plate which is 10 feet long so there's 10 10 and 12 adds up to 32 well a little less than that as we talked about before right so let's talk about the top plates so let's say we can do this we need to cover the top plates because that's what's gonna bond it together so the wind doesn't blow it over <laughs> and uh, let's talk about of the whole patterns in detail so we can all get out there with the drills and, and drill it and put put these things on the trailer and move them up to the site so let's do let's see what do we cover here um, 
lag bolts so that's the lag bolts pattern uh, that's that's a little detail we need to um, to do but let's talk about the uh, top plate because that's going to be important so we make sure that I mean if there's like a surprise storm our walls could fall down so you got to do things like okay here's here's the top plate that's another level of safety we probably want to leave a few braces uh, on the walls like as we're going up you want to put a few braces with stakes into the ground so like there's a bunch of stakes out on the field there's still uh, these two by two stakes that you ram into the, the earth and then long members like 10 footers or longer pieces of lumber we can go as cross braces so that like the last panel we put in we can screw it into the side of the panel and put it into the ground so it doesn't fall over um, or if someone trips on it and falls over or something um, so the other thing is, so there's top plate. Actually, let's well, let's let's make the braces also explicit. So braces in process. So that's in process. You need to reinforce things, or you can have things fall down on you. So okay. So for top plate. <clears throat> What's the BOM for that? Part one. Two of. Okay, that the short walls. What's that? We discussed this before. What are the two short walls? The top plates. Mm. Yes. Now, 16 feet. We gotta cut pre-cut it to 16 feet, because uh, the 16 footers may or may not be 16 feet. So, so cut to 16 feet, and that's uh, two by six. Okay, for the long sides, what do we have? We said we have 10, 12, 10, but it's actually shorter than 10 for the other one. So, so let's say we've got four. Um, let's do two 10 footers. Uh, what else we got? Twelve foot, right for the middle one, and then the last one. It's going to be a little shorter, right? It's going to be ten minus eleven inches, because we got the two top plates, right? So we got the top plate on the sixteen span in the whole side, which is five point five. So the long side is going to be five point five times two. So minus eleven. So that's going to be. 9 feet 1 inch 2 by 6 and that will all fit on top oh. we can pre-cut it long side long side so one inch? well oh, yeah. 10 11 minus 12 12 minus 11 so just to draw the pattern out here so that's the that's the one, that's the 10 footer, that's the 12 footer, and then this one on the long side. And then the pattern there is that's on the short side, like that. Right, so that makes sense. So these are going all the way to the, to the edges. These are full 16. But each of these have to be, you can't actually say that it's 10, 10 feet exactly and 12, you gotta, you gotta cut these, cut these all. They may not be 10, they might be like 10 and three quarters or 12 and one eighth or 12 and a quarter or something. They can be up to like 
a little bit over, just a little bit over. And that means you won't fit, and then you're going to have to take it down and then measure it and cut it again. So pre-cut it to the sides. We know we're 16 by 32. We better be 16 by 32 at the top. Well, actually, no. No, I'll take that back. I'm going to say, let's leave, this, let's leave this one open, because remember, we have the adjustment module. Um, well, no, 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 I think we're still good, because we're defining the corners, right? Corners at 16 by 32. We are going to have an adjustment module in the middle of the walls, which we might have to make a little shorter if the sill gaskets took too much space and we got to cut off like a half inch, even a quarter inch off the adjustment panel. We're expecting like a very minor adjustment on the adjustment panel. But the top plate will still be actually, it should be this right number. So I, I think we can just pre-cut it to, I think we can just go right ahead and pre-cut it to the right sizes because we have to make the make the top walls exact. I mean, top top of them has to be 16 by 32. Uh, how do you <coughs> cut the, um, the adjustment panel? You so you lift up. You take the side wall off and cut the top. Yeah, so I actually drew it in one of those CAD, CAD images here. Um, let's see, where is it? Special, I think it was under special panels or like special, where'd that go? Or was it up at the very top? I think I did it at the top here. Um, let's see. disappeared from this thing here you basically um, there you don't have to necessarily take the whole plywood off just take take the screws from the three sides keep one side so you don't have to relocate the plywood just take off like lift up the plywood a little bit all you're gonna need to do is cut off the plywood just a little bit and cut off take off the one stud and cut the bottom and top plate just a little bit like it's a tiny bit so should we have wrapped it in? uh no no we shouldn't have forgot about that adjustment panels you, we wanted to have accessible yeah so we got to take those staples out there um yeah minor um yeah well basically lift up the plywood and um i can show that we had one of these panels which showed how the plywood kind of just lifted up a little bit and and we threw that I don't know where what happened to the file I know it was I saw it in the final CAD okay I don't see but we lift up the plywood so there's enough space with the saw just trim it off just a little bit uh, and um, trim off the bottom and top plate a little bit and then put the side side stud on back again all right um, so I'd say I would say just go right ahead do it uh, top plate pre-cut all pre-cut I mean why it's it's because if it's not that means our second story platform is not gonna fit I mean we gotta be at 16 by 32 there's no question about it and, and we can be because we know we're at 16 by 32 at the bottom you just gotta keep the wall straight up with the lasers you keep it keep it aligned um, and then with levels you can measure okay the bubble should be you know laser not the laser level but regular level should tell you laser is probably we'll see if the laser works really well it should uh, if we can see the dot, put a little piece of paper next to the wall and the laser shining at it, you can see, okay, keep it like half inch. And for half inch on an entire wall, I mean, that's, should be good. Should be good. Uh, and then the top of the wall is still going to be a little flexible in and out. The only thing we got to make sure we end up on as 32 is the long side and the sh short side being 16. So we make sure that we do a, the adjustment module as it needs to be. As long as the corners are not like bent out or skewed in any way, we can measure from top of each corner and declare, hey, we've got 32, we've got 16. And that's where we should fix 
we should fix the corners with some uh, cross braces so they don't move because you know they're still going to be a little flexible so put cross braces on that to fix them at exactly 16 by 32 and those top plates should be fitting quite quite nicely so that's the top plate um, so it's 16 foot there all are pre-cut or if I mean they may be good just right on the spot like some of them may be just exactly 16 so just leave it but all are pre-cut so all are measured and pre-cut if needed so we can take that all up to the work site so we don't have to do that there and we just the top plate on. As soon as we have some of the walls, just take the top plates and just start screwing it down. Um, the person goes up there on the ladder. Um, if it's a 10 footer, how many panels need to go up before we can actually attach it? And there's three because they're four times three. So as soon as we've got three walls, wall modules up, we can actually put the top plate on, on them. Okay, so that's top plate. Okay, so let's, let's uh, nail out the lag bolt pattern. And this, this requires a little bit of attention because one side will have half inch bolt holes, the other side is going to have to have quarter inch bolt holes. Why not just do quarter inch bolt holes on both sides? Well, you could. Um, I was aiming at one half inch so you don't have to drive it in and because that part of the just do do a um, half inch because it might allow you I don't know does a half inch bolt allow you more play well once you put the bolt through it no so maybe we just do a quarter inch on both sides and then we don't have to worry about the sides maybe we just do that because the idea there was drilling a half inch on one side so the lag bolt goes easily that's good like I think I was prejudiced by thinking that okay I'm doing this by hand and it takes a little bit of force to ratchet in so it's a little bit of work but if we're using impacts then you can go through a half inch hole as quickly as a quarter inch hole because the tools doing the work for you mm -hmm. so I think we can actually do quarter inch and simplify the whole process I thought the half inch was for adjustment as well yeah but uh, at the same time if you have half inch yeah, because it, it locates the point exactly, so it's not. It would have to be larger than half inch to allow adjustment. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, but what, what I mean is the half inch hole is bigger than the quarter inch. So through the half inch hole, you can see the see where. Yeah, you the, can, yeah. but you're not necessarily looking through it anyway. I mean, you're not looking through it. Um, you kind of have to trust the the marking. Uh, at the phase of marking, that's where we have to impose the accuracy. If the marking and drilling that we do in a shop is not accurate, whether it's a half inch or a quarter, it won't work. So I'm actually not seeing a large case for the, the half inch bolts, because then we have to keep track of which side has half inch and which side has quarter. If we don't have to keep track of it, that's one less point of mess up. <laughs> um, in other words, if, if you have, because some, some of the modules, like for example, doors or the windows, you don't have enough space to even get your ratchet in there. You're not going to have the space at all. That gas is leaking. It's not stopping. Uh, how do you tell? Perfect. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so I would say just go with quarter inch because if you drill half inch, you might think like it's almost intuitive to think, oh, yeah, well, you have more adjustment, but you don't because you're constrained on a half inch bolt still. 
as long as the bolt goes in through the quarter inch pre-drill hole, which it will, then a half inch hole is as good as a quarter, assuming that you've got a tool that you don't have to fight the quarter inch hole, because that's going to be, it might be a little hard to, to do that. So, it's, so now the tool is going to have to work harder. That's just a practical consideration, but, but the tool should be able to do it. Now, the point was that you cannot get your tool in a tight space by windows and doors. So, for a reason, like those bolt holes, those lag bolt holes, would not be half inch. But if someone messed it up, they did do half inch holes there, then the bolt wouldn't grab. Mm -hmm. So, it's safer to do quarter everywhere and keep it safe and let the tools do the work for us. So, with the so let's do that. With the windows and doors, mm -hmm. because you're basically drilling, you're, what is it, you're attaching from one side, going along one way. Mm -hmm. So for the windows and doors, if you can't get in from that side, you do it from the other side. Right, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's where the position of the half inch versus quarter inch hole, whether it's one side or the other, that would matter. In fact, the, the window module would have to have only quarter inch holes. Mm -hmm. Unlike the other modules, which you can do like half inch on one side and quarter inch on the other, let's get, get rid of that complication. So let's do all, do all quarter inch holes. That makes it simpler. So exact location, uh, call it 4.5 feet up. From the bottom, so make sure we got because uh, it won't be won't be the same if it's we don't have the panel facing the right way. So 4.5 feet up from the bottom, which is not exactly in the middle because it's slightly off the middle because we're at nine feet minus the three eighths inch thing. So 4.5 feet from the bottom, it'll be close, but they won't fit, and and you'll have to just re re drill the hole or just yeah redrill and then go 2.5 um, down which means uh, so then two feet from the bottom and then uh, since it's easier to measure from the top and bottom like as opposed to the middle because you have to hold it in a particular position in the middle, let's just measure off two feet from the top. The top. Okay. That's it. Now if we look at all our all our panels, so let's let's look at slide seven here. So what's it look like? Now what about the corners? Corners don't apply for this, so we gotta pay a little attention there. All the panels are next to each other, yes you can have those bolts as described, all the holes as described. That's good. Uh, now be careful about the special modules such as the doors or preframe door. So there's 22 and 3 and 9 are doors or preframe doors. 9 is a preframe door, the hidden door for expansion. Well, where are you going to measure from the bottom of that? That has a piece that's at the level of the sill plate. If you, you remember that, that design, it's got the bottom where the which sits on top of the sill plate and it's got uh, the very bottom which is lower which is actually the sill plate that goes like a cutout a cutout that we have to make in the wall there if you remember that part uh, so there we have to be uh, let's make sure whoever's doing 9, 22 and 3 make sure that uh, before we do that let's let's talk about that um, so for th well 22 and 3 because they they're sitting on top of the sill plate like everything else um, it should be transparent. They should be; those should be nine feet, and therefore the, our same measurements apply. But it's a little tricky for the nine, so I'm just going to make a note here. So now, special considerations here. Module 9, uh, careful, so um, 
because the bottom because very bottom of that module is 1.5 inch lower than normal uh, so sides should still be okay so we should still be able to measure from the sides still be nine feet well let's call it 104 107 five eighths inch so regular marking applies um, module 3 and 22 yeah th it should still work the, the same pattern should work for 3 and 22 that um, but corners now what about the corners what do we do there yeah but the but the, the holes are in a different place on the long side corner which has the nailing plate so the nailing plate side gets the holes not the end does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, but, 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 but you, still, you can still measure from the inside. You can measure from the inside. Yeah. No, no, what I mean is well, measure on the side that, that goes against the uh, short wall. The, 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 na the lug bolt will go in from this side. Yes. But you can still measure from this side because it's still the line mark. Uh, you just have to make sure that, um, like, regarding the vertical, like the midpoint, uh, and that midpoint is half of 5.5, .5, so I was thinking maybe we could make it something a little simpler, like 2 or 2.5, because then it's just easier to measure. Uh, I'd say just call it for like 2 inches off the edge. Uh, that should be pretty decent or 2.5 can we measure 2.5 be accurate um, let's do 2.5 2.5 for accuracy so that means it's three inches of one end and uh, one side and 2.5 from the other right uh, let's let's do maybe 2.5 it's closer to the middle um, now uh, half of 5.5 5 is actually 2.75. Yeah, I think we could do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't we do that then? So we don't have to. Um, yeah, dead center. So 2.75, according to Ken. We'll do it. Okay, 2.75. So. Hole isn't centered heightwise. Two point seven five inch. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, is this diagram here clear? That's, that's pretty much down the center. So that's, um, let's make sure that, so 2.5 inch, 2.75, midpoint. Mark the, uh, the center line. The center. Well, you want to 
measure off the edge 2.75 and and maybe measure it off both sides so make sure it's 2.75 off one side and 2.75 off the other it's actually better because it might be slightly off here and there but it's got the siding on one side already so it's going to be a little different but measure when you measure it just measure it from the the wood itself no, maybe well, I think uh, so with a speed square if you measure 2.5 from one side if you put the speed square on the other side which has the, w the actual siding on it um, you can pretty much get it but then uh, off the other side it's the siding is 5 8 so it's a little little different there so you just have to pay attention that you're 2.75 um, off either mm -hmm. so what that's referring to that's here we're referring to the structure not the siding so it's down the center of the stud not down the center of the stud plus siding um, so maybe maybe say that this is the structure so this is structure without plywood without exterior plywood so wh why are we using scaffolding scaffolding instead of like a crane it's cheaper no. One of these. Uh, a crane would be a major investment. I mean, you don't need a crane. You c you could a crane would help. Oh, I see that kind of a tool. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, Woodworking marking gauge. Yeah. For any piece of equipment you're talking about, um, like crane like that, probably a thousand bucks a day. Um, it would help it would be also a thousand dollars out of your pocket but for the first floor you you don't need to lift anything you well, I mean you're putting the things into place just find I don't know if anybody does that I mean that's a major piece of hauling and, and just to get it to the site um, yeah so there's significant well, expenses it doesn't make sense to use a crane for it as thousand square foot house probably. Probably not. Uh, cranes are used when, when the materials themselves, people can't pick it up typically. Here you can with a couple of people. So for the second floor we can also use the scaffolding or the tractor to lift the modules up so it's not, not too bad. If we have a, if we had a crane or like a what would be known as a cherry picker on a tractor, there'll be like a long beam on a tractor that you can do that, that would also work. So it'll be a, um, I guess they might call it a boom pole. Um, yeah, those, all kinds of tools like that can, can provide assistance if you have access to them, but if you don't, there's a rental, <coughs> rental cost that adds up to all the costs. Um, okay. Let's talk about the corners here. So corners. So corners are a little different. Now the short side corners are going to be the same, right? Because they're right. The nailing plates are on the long side corners, right? So. Short side corners are still the same. Long side corners have nailing plate. So now the nailing plate, where are you measuring on, on that? You're going to have to measure the 2.75 off the outer edge 
So, so let's draw a little diagram of it, or maybe like pull it out from the CAD. Let's pull it out from the CAD. So we take a look at a module that's got it's a long side corner. So what's a, what's an example of that's that would be module number 22 for example. Sorry, 23. All right, so say, say that's inside there. Um, so that's nailing plate, and that's the outside there. Right. Mm hmm. So so I guess if we take a picture of this okay so that's looking from the inside of module 23 let's let's um, paste that in Well, so um, we'll be measuring off the left edge there. I mean, I, I think that's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. But but it's not on the edge. So so you're not drilling the holes on the edge. You're doing it on the face here, the inner face. Bolt holes go on inner face. So that's that's the thing to remember. Other than that, it's pretty much transparent, what you got to do. Does that make sense? Okay. Well, so so then we can, uh, I think, pretty much... Any other questions regarding the general process here? So what do we got? We got the vinyl flashing. We got the walls. We got the top plate. Right after the top plate is in place. Well, if we get to that point, that would be good for today. Um, braces, yes. Do the braces on the corners so that we locate the 16 by 32 exactly. Then talk about braces. In the so, workshop, uh, redrilling the holes with that with the mag drill. Yeah. What locations? Um, 2.75 from the top of the and then on the floor. Four and a half feet, so vertically. Four and a half feet. Two feet from the bottom and two feet from the top. Two feet from the bottom and top. It's page three, maybe take a picture of uh, page three. Special considerations, module nine maybe either be careful or let me do that um, but you, you just got to understand what module 9 is it's got the bottom plate built into it so therefore it, you're measuring off the sides not from the bottom plate um, the door modules they, they should be transparent that should be okay so maybe uh, we just uh, eliminate that as a consideration strike through um, corners Short side, it's still identical. No special considerations. Just the long side corners have the nailing plate, so bolt holes go on inner face. 
of wall module, not on the edge as everywhere else. So all our quarter inch holes. Now we could do this, just take a hand drill and drill through this, but the, why are we doing that? It's just difficult to do the light bolts with, with the regular. Hmm? It's just difficult to, to do the light bolts with the regular drill. Like, a lot of force is required. Well, no, but I'm saying, why, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm saying, why aren't we pre-drilling the holes, the actual quarter inches holes, just with our DeWalt drills? Why do we want to use, go a little more advanced with a mag drill? What's the reason for that? Accuracy. Accuracy. Yeah. It's very hard to, by hand, get a per straight, straight up and down hole. You're going to drift. So either bench press, but since this is impossible to get this under a bench press, a drill press, use a mag drill which is designed to actually go on the workpiece itself now how do we mount the mag drill so the mag drill will stick onto a metal plate of any sort so it's got a magnetic base so what's the easiest way to do it maybe do we put hmm? metal plate on the other side yeah yeah so maybe maybe um, clamp down a metal plate that would be perhaps the easiest so, so then you keep the metal plate well, the metal plate is going to stick to the drill once you turn it, turn the magnet on, but then you just clamp that metal plate in position so drill right at the right place. So what's the steps there? You got to mark the holes on the on the sides of the, the panels. Did, did we talk about the centering hole? The centering? We did not talk about it. That's a one inch hole though. Mm. So, and it's like it's almost like. Why are we going to have to do it? But I, I think we should because if there's going to be some panels that are just hard to get into place. Uh, I think that's going to save us a lot of time. Um, so I would go forward with that. And that's just a one inch bolt, uh, one, well, one inch uh, drill bit. Um, it will help us. It, it could definitely help us. So one inch. Uh, for that, we just take a, let's see, what, what else to say about that. Um, actually, let's mark that as a separate item here. So the, I see, so let's maybe put it here. Well, that was the, the procedure for building the walls. So that was the this, that's, that was the important part. Bottom lag bolt, top lag bolt, centering hole, and here we go with lag bolts pattern plus locating hole. Um, That thing is one inch, one inch tapered shaft. I'll, I'll prepare that. That's like make it, you know, like six inches or so. Um, well, you just we just need like three inches but to go through the wall. But with the taper, you add like an inch so before, then like. Five, five or six inch. Uh, and we said so three inches above, above mid hole. So the thing is, first of all, like pay attention to top and bottom. I guess we didn't, um, we didn't state that. Pay attention to top and bottom of panel. It does matter. Or we can go exactly at the middle, where you got this fractional measurement, mm -hmm. but maybe, maybe not. Maybe keep it away from just measure measure from the bottom. Wow. 
so 4.5 up from the bottom. Mm -hmm. You're saying the bottom is easy to identify because of the overhang. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah, pay attention to the bottom because you'll be off 3 eighths inches if you don't pay attention to that. Uh, we can say it's, we can say in it's 4.5 minus 3 sixteenths. Keep it simple. <coughs> Especially if, like, if the panel may be like off a little bit. We're measuring uniformly from either top or bottom, so we're, we'll know exactly that the bottom is aligned, and then we'll have to just adjust the one side if if anything is needed. And I think we did have some issues, like for example the like for example the, the headers. Some of them were like instead of 11.25, they were 11.5. So. I mean, we know that there's some some errors here, so we kind of have to be uniform about where we're measuring from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So maybe I think probably think to in terms of quality control, just pay attention. Maybe take a take this slide. Take a picture of that or download this slide as your reference. This one as well. Now braces, so once we do the corners, it's most important quality control. So it's once once corners are installed, now let's do once four corners are installed. Measure. Measure for 16. So let's break that apart. Measure 16 feet on two sides. Adjust to make it 16 if it's not. And lasers should be set up. So you can measure, you know, make sure it's vertical against the lasers and maybe split the difference if you don't get exactly 16, like make it still vertical and as close to possible as possible. Mm -hmm. So after that, measure the 32 and adjust it if needed on two long sides. Now, if the, the, this is correct, that does not mean that you've got a square shape. It could be a parallelogram. So you've got to do the cross measurement. Cross measure. And what is that? Get out the calculator. And that's 192 squared plus 384 squared and then so 429.32 divided by that's 429 inches divided by 12 so what do we got there 35.77 feet Seven eight feet, thirty five point eight feet. So we should should be close to thirty five point eight. If it's off of that, it means we got a parallelogram. We got to try to work it so it's it's actually um, thirty five eight across. Point eight. So point eight uh, or like point. How many inches is that? Point seven eight times 12 it's about 9 so 9 point about 9 point 4 so 35 feet 9 inches Thirty 
5 feet 9.4 inches so that we should get as close to that as possible at that point put in the braces install braces so fix this so this is our accurate corners install braces okay so what's a brace let's just make that clear that up so we've got um, your wall panel here then you've got your other one next to that on the corner where do you put the brace so one brace would go on this edge here of that panel throw in a brace like this to the ground and screw that into the edge um, not on the face but on the edge screw into edge now what's the problem with that though once you want to put the next panel on it's going to be an issue so move that brace here I would move it here would that work? Then you're fixing the corner so it's closer to the corner. So this side here is going to get trimmed. So as long as you're within 3.5 inches of the corner, those those screw holes are going to get covered up. And you screw you don't want to be putting screw holes in. Each of them is a is a water hole. So so if you put that screw in within 3.5 inches of the edge, that's going to get covered up and and um, flashing tape on that too. So we're gonna that's going to get protected. So it's safe to put the brace on the corner there, and then the other brace at a right angle to it, 90 degrees to that. So you'd go like this here, um, can you kind of picture that? And the stake in the ground is, is um, so it's a 2 by 2 stake that goes in the ground. Does that make sense? Unscrew that. So therefore, the stiff board board has to be like you know, eight feet or ten feet. So not screw into edge. Screw into the corner. Within three point five inches of edge of corner that's going to get trimmed up and water sealed later there's going to be trim and butyl tape which is uh, for waterproofing so once we put the trim in the underneath the trim is going to be butyl tapes which is self sealing anything that get pokes through it, it seals around the, the screw or nail stakes 2 by 2 inch stakes screwed in. So that's, you ram that with a hammer, heavy hammer, or regular hammer. Uh, there and stiff. You can't move this thing around at this point. So this becomes stiff. Each corner is fixed. And then we can move in between the corners and, and uh, still maintain our 16 by 32. Then when we put the top, the, the second story platform, that will fit right on top. Okay. Install braces per corner. So that's about it. Mm -hmm. So we covered the, the holes, the quarter inch holes for the lag bolts. We covered braces, we covered top plate, and uh, location of the the lag bolt holes. Mag drills are used to drill them. Mm -hmm. Any questions on this process? Lasers, uh, I mean I didn't emphasize the lasers but they were in the other document. 
take those out uh, so we can put the laser so actually let's draw it on a corner here so we're gonna have a tripod on each corner and put the laser on it which will shoot in two directions either one direction or two directions we have two lasers that shoot in two directions and four lasers that shoot in one direction but they're self-aligning so they they get you the plane the vertical plane or the horizontal plane we don't need horizontal planes here at this point uh, just the vertical planes at a right angle to each other so if you if you fix two corners with two lasers it guarantees that you're going in the correct direction but to set it up you I mean you gotta set it up so it's exactly along like you, I mean the setup is what's gonna take all the time here set up the lasers um, so gasket yeah set up on the site carrying everything over and then setting it up so a little laser goes on top here laser tripod mm -hmm. when we're uh, like another comment on the braces though on a long wall the midpoint is the weakest it would help unless we're sure the top plate is on their midpoint of 32 foot wall needs a brace now how do you attach that once the you have a flat wall where do you attach to you'd have to screw in a block and then attach to that block once again screw in a block within the 3.5 inches or like w basically within the batten distance like within a couple of inches of the edge so that it gets covered by battens and by the water sealing tape it's at the seams so basically you can screw in that block at the seams uh, at the at the edges close to the edges not like in the middle of the panel because that's a hole that's going to be a water hole later uh, water infiltration so um, maybe maybe do a little diagram of that for that so if you got like the middle walls walls towards the middle so put your little block I mean you can reach all also to the top but that would be a pretty long stake so it's easier just do a little block screw in a block like right there you know, maybe like across the seam and then your brace goes to that like that you know towards the edge there Mm-hmm. Any questions on this? So what's our first step in the shop? Yeah, um, if we can get this all, yeah, I mean, hopefully we can get those panels up and get get this thing start starting the install today. Um, we could do that. It seems. Yeah, I'd be in favor of starting it this morning. If we're not, nothing well, else well, we got to finish. Oh, you like before we finish the other modules? Uh, oh no, I mean go to the workshop. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, we're going, we're going right in. 
Let's go right in. Yep. We love a, we should have a party in the house. <laughs> house party. Hey, we're building a house. We house can have a house city. party. You, you, I'll create like little invitations and print them out. Invite all our friends in Mesa. Invite, <laughs> yeah, invite. Mesa. Oh yeah, where are we going to the old uh, stove in the bay? I want to be going today. To all right, so we can stop recording here. We can move on to the workshop. And I'll just yeah. upload the video here. Uh, Jefferson, we're